Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to lock or unlock a field in a new record in your Microsoft Access database. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, if you got a bunch of checkboxes over here, like in a continuous form, right? You want to be able to check on those guys. Okay. But you don't want to check on this last one, right? If you click on that, it, it creates a blank new record. You don't want that. So you want to be able to lock this guy and not let the user click that box if it's the new record. Otherwise, yeah, sure, go ahead. All right. And that's what we're going to cover in today's video. Now, this is part 52 of my fitness database series. Don't worry if you haven't seen all the previous ones. You don't really have to. And if you don't care about tracking fitness and calories and all that stuff, that's okay. This is a database series about building a database. And I'm showing you all kinds of cool tips and tricks. So are you ready? Here we go. All right. I just want to start off today by saying I really, really like using these Eaton buttons now because right now, for example, it's about four o'clock. I just had lunch and I can easily plan the rest of my day. I know I'm going to work out today. Uh, actually, this is today's a push day. So let's put push in there. Um, I know that I'm going to have my fruit bowl and yogurt uh, before I go to bed. That's a, like a nightly ritual. I look forward to that every night. Thank you. Um, and that tells me I've got about a thousand calories to work with for dinner. So that lets me know, you know, roughly what, you know, how, how big of a dinner I can eat and still fall within my, gu my guidelines for today. I'd like to stay around 2000 if I can. Remember the, the key with, with sustainable weight loss is you don't want to starve yourself. So you don't want to go too far. My BMR is right, right around like 2,400. So a 400 calorie deficit is plenty. Anyways, getting back to the access stuff. I did discover one little bug. If you click on, say, something here and you hold down shift click, you get that. Uh, I wonder if any of you guys uh, discovered that. Basically, we're trying to, um, it says syntax error in, ex in query expression. It says food date time less than, and there's nothing, right? Just the two pound signs, octothorps, whatever you want to call them. And food time is greater than this. That's because this value, right, doesn't exist. It's null. So we basically just have to check for if this is null, which it shouldn't be. I don't think we do. We don't allow that, do we? See, and then it creates a duplicate record there. So let's delete that. I don't think we can just blank this. Let's see. I think it, yeah, see, invalidate it. Let's see, it doesn't let you do that. So we really just have to check to make sure they're not clicking on the last record. And it's only with the shift click. It's not even with the regular click. So let's delete that again. Let's go back into our code. I just did a search for shift click and there it is. And this is quite simply just before we do anything, if me dot, actually we have to put it inside the shift click. We can't put it there. So if you do hit shift click right here, if me dot new record, then exit sub. Just don't do anything. Just get right out of Dodge. We haven't really set anything. And there's no loops at all. So that should be a fix for that. Save it, debug, compile once in a while. All right, let's try it again. Click and shift click and nothing happens. And when I say nothing happens, I mean, you don't get that error anymore. You still do get a blank item down here. Now I hate that too. So let's, let's do that. Let's fix that too. Um, so basically what I'd like to do here, thinking of it logically in my brain hole, um, I'd like to say, okay, if we're on a new record, if we're sitting on a brand new record, don't let the user click on that box, right? Click or shift click either one. See, now I just undid, undid everything because I shift clicked down there. Let me put all these back in place here. Um, so let's try, let's see if this works. I like to like experiment with things and see if they'll work first because I like to go with the easy solution first. All right, let's get rid of that, delete that. Let's try putting a before update event in this box, right? Before this is updated, check to see if we're on a new record. And if so, cancel. Let's try that. Let's give that a shot. You can always say when I, when I say let's try it, that means I already know it's not going to work, but I'm trying to teach you guys something. So <laughs> I know this isn't going to work, but let's try it anyway. So you can see my processing here, my, my, my thought process. So let's go in the before update event, which is where you'd think you'd do this, right? We'll say if me dot new record, then cancel equals true, exit sub, right? You'd think that you should be able to do that. I'm trying to update this field 
But if I'm on a new record, can cancel and exit out. Let's give it a shot. Ready? Save it. Close it. Save it. Open it. All right. Come down here and click. And it still didn't work. Hmm. All right, let's make sure that event is firing. That's the next thing I think of. Is this event really firing? Let's just do a message box high in there. Save it. Come back out here. Let's try it again. Ready? Click. There's my high. Oh, but look in the background. Look, the record's already there. See? Eh, that's not going to work either. All right, delete. Um, okay, if we can't cancel it, how about an undo? Instead of cancel, let's try to throw it. Let's do them both. Let's put a, a me dot undo in here. Undo undoes the changes. Right, that you just did. Let's try that. Let's see if that works. And nope, still not working. Okay, so what's the solution here? You say, well, we can't rely on that event because, and here's the lesson I wanted to teach you. When you click on that box, Access immediately puts a new record in there, even before the event fires. Now you get into the before update, right? And it's not trying to update a record because the record's already there. So new record is no longer new record. In fact, you can see that if you put it in here instead of messaging high, right? Message box, message box, new, right? And we'll say in here, me dot new record like this. Save it and click, see? False, it's not the new record, zero. So, so it's too late by the time we've already clicked on this record. So we need a different approach. Okay, so let's get rid of this whole thing. What we're gonna do instead is we're gonna prevent the user from clicking on that box in the first place if you're on a new record. How do we do that? Well, we use the form current event, right? Remember on current event runs every time you move from record to record. And we're gonna say, if we click on this record, then lock that box. Okay, that event actually does fire before it processes any data. So, and sometimes, sometimes it's a matter of figuring out which event runs at the right time that you want it to. There are a million events, and I try to cover them all in my developer course and in my in my advanced series I go about event timing. But sometimes it's just you got to experiment with them because I'll be honest, there's so many events that even I don't remember them all. I mean, look at them in here. I mean, I I don't remember which one goes before which one half the time. Here's all the events for a form. Uh, right? And there's a lot of them. So when does this go? When does that go? Well, in this particular case, we're going to use the on current event. So form on current right here. Okay. We're going to say if me dot new record, then, so if we go to a new record, we're going to say has eaten dot locked equals true. You could also use enabled, but enabled will make the whole column look gray. I've dealt with that one before. It locks all of them. Remember, this is going to lock every box on the form, but the on current event fires first. So if you do click on a different box, it should still work because we're going to say else has eaten dot locked equals false. And if. Okay. Now, we also need a way to unlock the box if the user starts entering a new record. We'll deal with that one next. Let's first make sure this one works. Save it. Debug compile. And ready. All right, I can click on this guy. I can click on this guy. I can click on this guy and nothing happens because the on current event locks the box before the record touches the table. See, now if I come over here and start typing and then I click on this, it's still locked. Right, because we haven't fired a new on current event yet. So we need a way to say, hey, when the user starts putting that record in and the record actually exists, I need to unlock this guy. Okay, and for that, we can actually use the forms dirty event. There's actually a, an event called on dirty right there. This guy fires as soon as a new record is created. In other words, when the form goes dirty, the whole thing we're talking about with making a form not dirty, which saves it. Okay. So as soon as the user starts putting something in here, has eaten dot locked equals false. And that should unlock it as soon as they start creating a record. All right, save it. Let's try it. Close it, close it, close it, close it. Open it. All right, here we go. Ready? And now I can click on you. I can click on you. I can't click on you. But as soon as I start typing something in, now I can click on you. Look at that, but I can't click on you. And this also fixes the shift click on a new record problem too. watch this delete click here, shift click here, can't 
click on it because it's not available to be clicked on. So technically, we really don't need that code that we put in before, but I thought of doing this after I already had written that, so you learn both. <laughs> the second bit of code is not really necessary, but it's not a big deal. But this still works. Okay. And it came up in the forums this morning. One of my users asked. He said he was having problems because he was trying to shift click and go backwards, and that's not how it's set up. The way the code works right now is the first one has to be chronologically on top. That's how I wrote the code. It starts from this one, and then the loop goes to this one. Um, one of my other students said that, yeah, you could program it to go backwards if you really wanted to. Instead of looking at the times chronologically, you could just click on the last one, store in memory a variable, what's the ID that you just clicked on, right? Or the time, either one. And then when you do the shift click, pull that variable out, and it, and go from that one, and, if, and, and just check to see if the times are backwards, then run the loop backwards. It's not hard to do. I'm not going to do it, but it wouldn't be hard to do. So if you guys want to do it for homework, go right ahead. <laughs> and if you have problems, post it in the forums and we'll take a look at it. And if enough of you want to see it, post a comment down below and I'll add it to a future lesson. This, this series is all about what you guys want to see too. I'm adding stuff to this that I want for myself. But hey, squeaky wheel gets the grease. If enough of you want to see how to do something like that too, then I'll throw it in. All right, it's like the spaghetti sauce. Which one was it, ragu or prego? It's in there. We'll throw it in. <laughs> well, that's going to do it for your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mention in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that Show More link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.